Hello friends and uh, welcome. Uh, my name is the Reverend Mark Coles and I'm based in the Sankey Valley uh, Methodist Circuit. Today our passage uh, comes from Matthew uh, chapter 16 and verses 21 to 28 uh, and I'm reading from uh, the Message uh, Bible. Then Jesus made it clear to his disciples that it was now necessary for him to go to Jerusalem to submit to an ordeal of suffering at the hands of the religious leaders, be killed and then on the third day be raised up alive. Peter took him aside, protesting, impossible master, that can never be. But Jesus didn't swerve. Peter, get out of my way. Satan, get lost. You have no idea how God works. Then Jesus went to work on his disciples. Anyone who intends to come with me has to let me lead. You're not in the driver's seat. I am. Don't run from suffering. Embrace it. Follow me and I'll show you how. Self-help is no help at all. Self-sacrifice is the way. My way to finding yourself, your true self. What kind of deal is it to get everything you want to but, but to lose your life? Lose yourself. What could you ever trade for your soul? Don't be in such a hurry to go into business for yourself. Before you know it, the Son of Man will arrive with all the splendour of his Father, accompanied by an army of angels. You'll get everything you have coming to you, a personal gift. This isn't pie in the sky by and by. For some of you, standing here are going to see it take place. See the Son of Man in kingdom glory. And so we thank God uh, for his word to us on this day. Amen. My friends, today we hear Jesus uh, telling Peter and the disciples the sacrificial cost of what he must do to carry out God's will for all people. God's plan of salvation. And, and the sacrificial cost of what they must do as the disciples of the Christ. In the Message Bible we hear, Jesus made it clear to his disciples that it was now necessary for him to go up to Jerusalem to submit to an ordeal of suffering at the hands of the religious leaders, be killed, and then, and then, on the third day, be raised up alive. Well, typically, uh, Peter took the initiative. And as usual in my language, he engaged uh, speech uh, before brain. He engaged speech before brain. And he says, impossible, master, impossible. That can never be. In a sense, in a sense, Peter is boasting here. We'll protect you, Lord. Uh, we'll protect you, Jesus. Uh, we will see to it that you are accepted. Uh, you won't be rejected at all. Uh, no fear. And never, never will you die. Now perhaps we can understand that Peter did not want his leader, his rabbi, his friend to experience pain, unpleasantness, suffering, rejection, death itself. And again, in a sense, perhaps Peter was right in what he said, for a suffering Messiah, well, did not fit in with many people's idea of what the Messiah uh, ought to have been. And, and perhaps he didn't fit in with many of the disciples, uh, those men, that day. And yet, and yet a suffering Messiah? Well, well, surely not. But on hearing this, 
on hearing this, Peter, sorry, Jesus shows, on hearing this, Jesus shows both his divine purpose and his true humanity. Because he became angry. He took Peter to task. He took him aside and said to him, get out of my way, Satan. For frustrated, once again, for frustrated, once again, Jesus says, Peter, once more, once more, you do not understand what is going on. But you, you, Peter, are the one I'm most counting on. You are the one I'm counting on to provide leadership when I am gone. And so I need you, Peter. I need you, Peter, above all, to understand, to really, really understand what my life, what my messiahship is all about. And yet still, still, Peter, you don't know what God truly intends for the Christ, the Messiah, and for you. You see, although our passage today, uh, we have Peter replying, no Lord, no Lord, in relation to Jesus' prediction about his Messiahship, just perhaps Peter was saying here, uh, no Lord, no Lord, not me, not me. Yes, just perhaps, just perhaps in, in these things, if these things could happen uh, to the Son of God, if these things could happen to the Messiah, if these things could happen uh, to Peter's rabbi, leader and friend, or perhaps they could happen to him. Perhaps they could happen to those who follow him. And so we can imagine, we can imagine that it was natural for Peter to feel that way because if we're honest if we're really honest even we tend to say oh no lord no lord not me uh, when it comes to the reality of following jesus for we don't want to experience rejection we don't want to experience mockery dare i say we don't want to experience pain or unpleasantness rejection or suffering even death Yet many are those who have suffered this as they've taken up their cross and followed Jesus. You see, at times I wonder, wouldn't we rather forget, wouldn't we rather forget what Jesus went through? Wouldn't we rather remember uh, the joy of the babe of Bethlehem, of the arrival of the infant child? And then celebrate the wonder of Christ alive, resurrection day. Wouldn't we rather remember those and forget all about Ash Wednesday, Monday Thursday, and Good Friday, God's Friday? Wouldn't we rather forget about the rejection, the suffering, and the pain of Christ? Wouldn't we rather wouldn't we rather focus only on the pleasant side, the happier side of Jesus' life and his story? But, but my friends, with God, with God, it had to be uh, this way. For through his life, his suffering, his death on the cross and his resurrection, Jesus saves us. He saves you and me by showing us the way to life, real life, eternal life, a life in the knowledge of God's forgiveness, God's mercy, God's love, God's grace given unconditionally to you and me, no strings attached. Yes, you see, our God, our God provides for us the chance to live a life with a full range of the possibilities that are potentially present in everyone. God, let's have that again. God provides for us the chance to live, to truly live with a full range of the possibilities potentially present in everyone. Everyone. For God, for God so loved the world that he gave his one only son, that whoever believes in him 
should not perish, but shall have eternal life. Hallelujah, John 3, 16. My friends, the truth of the gospel is this. Through the power and the victory of the cross, Jesus saves us by his death, overcoming once and for all the power of sin. For through him, sin can no longer have a death grip on you and me. For as we turn to God in and through Christ, as we confess our faults and our failings, as we choose to repent and turn to him and to renew our lives in and through him, we have that life, that eternal life in all its fullness. And my friends, and because, because Christ helps us to understand that we, we, you and me, we are the most precious in all of creation. And that we, you and me, we are worth dying for. We are worth Christ's sacrifice on the cross. Well, therefore Christ's death and resurrection gives us the hope and the purpose to go on in life, living a life to the fullest, to the fullest with God, despite those difficulties, those pitfalls and tragedies that may befall us, we can live life to the fullest with and in God. And so my friends, Jesus chose the cross and he challenged those followers of his, those disciples 2,000 years ago, uh, well, to follow him all the way to Jerusalem, to be witnesses to his life, his death and his resurrection, that they too, that they too might deny themselves and take up their cross and follow him. So today, today, this is Christ's call to you and to me. For we are to follow him, to take up our cross, denying ourselves and live for him and him alone. To allow him to reign in every part of our lives. To choose the cross. To choose Christ's way for us. And well, this means, uh, this means that we put Jesus in the driving seat of our lives. That's why the steering wheel's behind us, off one of the race cars, uh, as we choose to put Christ in the driving seat of our lives. Friends, many years ago when I was a child, I was with my parents uh, travelling to Anglesey. We came up to a crossroads. And at the crossroads in front of us was a mini. Now I'm not talking about the big thing it's become, I'm talking about the proper classic mini, that little small box uh, that it was all those many years ago when I was a child. Well, in this car were three people. There was a, a little, what looked like an old gentleman driving. Uh, in the passenger seat to the left uh, was a lady. And behind him was a rather large lady who seemed to fill up the entire back seat of this mini that had sort of hunched down. What we could see happening was that the lady in the passenger seat, well, she was gesticulating to, well, to turn right. Go right, she was gesticulating. And the lady in the back seat was gesticulating, go, go left, go left, she was saying. And after a lot of tugging of shoulders and, and prodding and, and gesticulating. Do you know what the man did? Do you know what the man did? Well, he drove straight on. He drove straight on. He had no idea really which way to go. That was a junction that we passed many times uh, with my family and we called it the that away junction because he had uh, no way to go. I want to ask you and me today this question. And it's an important question. Who is in 
the driver's seat of your life? Who's in the driver's seat of your life and mine? To, to conclude, my friends, the good news of today's gospel is that being a Christian is not always easy, but it is always, but it is always, always life-giving and meaningful. The good news of today's gospel is that we have the resources to give up or take on whatever we must for the sake of God's kingdom. That we can, uh, we must, make the necessary sacrifices, the offering and giving of ourselves to God, so that God's work, God's will, may be done. Yes, the good news of today's gospel is that we have the resources to take up our own crosses. We can choose to give ourselves away, not hoarding our resources, knowing that God gave us life, not to keep it, but to spend it, to spend it for his sake. To spend our lives in, well, God's kingdom purposes. God's kingdom purposes at work in you and in me. Yes, my friends, we can choose to take up our own crosses to follow Jesus by giving of our time, our talents and our resources for the purposes of God and his love at work in this world. You see, as the children of the kingdom, as Christ's ones, as his disciples, we're called to live lives of faithfulness, following in Jesus' footsteps and doing our utmost to live by Christ's example, living every day for him and doing, being his children, his people, about his work and his love. So finally, my friends, my friends, the good news of today's gospel is that God's kingdom is here and now. It's being perfected in those who choose daily to deny themselves, to deny our selfishness and to pick up the crosses, the crosses that God, God calls us to bear. My friends, may we choose to put Jesus in the driving seat of our lives. Yes, may we choose to take up that cross that he calls us to take up. And yes, may we truly live, may we truly live to Christ's praise and glory. Thanks be to God. Well, friends, I want to thank you for uh, listening today. I want to thank you for uh, sharing uh, in this time together. I hope that my word has indeed been a blessing to you. But for now, may I offer you the blessing and the peace of God in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit.